remember uh, one Sunday evening calling the CLT in here uh, late on a Sunday afternoon into the early evening to really consider well this looks like something really significant that's going to impact on the school. It was a Sunday evening and I got a call from Peter Fulliger and was asked to come in. It had been something that was happening overseas and something that we were mindful of but perhaps we didn't think it was coming and coming quite so quickly particularly around school closures, and we met as a bit of a, a nudgy college cabinet and uh, started planning. The smiles from the kids has been something that, that something you don't appreciate as much until you, you don't see them every day. I think I was concerned about the world. I know that sounds big, so I was concerned about what restrictions in the world that we were going to be facing at the time and whether we were even going to be able to do this. I was worried about how many of our staff might become ill, how many of our boys might become ill. I, I think that probably overshadowed all the things I should have been concerned about, but I worried about what sort of world we all will be living in while this was playing out. Probably after an initial flurry of panic, I uh, woke up in the morning and thought, yeah, this is, this is an opportunity. Uh, I think that the paradigm around learning and teaching is ripe to change and to be inclusive of online learning and also to embrace technology and do it in a meaningful way. And it gave us a mandate to do that, so it was actually quite exciting. If you change everything, people are confused. People need to anchor themselves to something that they're familiar with and they need to feel in control. So yes, we wanted to change to online learning environments and that was really dynamic and really new, but it comes with anxiety for everyone. So keeping the rhythm of the timetable and the sequence of lessons and also the relationship of teachers logging in and being face to face with students every day allowed that to happen more easily. How do we transition, you know, classroom learning into the home for a diverse group of almost 1700 boys aged between eight and 18 would be like an ambitious research question for the best of researchers. And yet Nudgee College, over the course of a month, developed a methodology and translated it into policy and practice. It did surprise me, the way they were able to do that, because it just showed an incredible agility, but it surprised me, but I was also incredibly proud of that agility that they showed. We first started seeing it in around week six and week seven of term one. We had to start changing some of our practices around hand hygiene and, and our health. Things like using hand sanitizer, washing hands before they enter the space. That transition from the modified training and extra hygiene practices to no training at all uh, happened pretty quickly. I think over the course of maybe two or three weeks we went from no water bottles, washing hands to yeah, training's, training's off. So the process to get the boys home after the end of term, that's something we have to consider. To make sure we could get the boys home back with their families, we needed to get them out as quickly as we could. For some boys, getting them internet access and access to Wi-Fi, being able to log on to the uh, online classes was a challenge initially. And then also within their homes, um, some of these boys have big families, brothers, sisters who are all learning um, in the same rooms or at the same time. So making sure that they have suitable places to learn and um, suitable access to their teachers, to their support networks. A great part of Catholic spirituality is worshipping together. We couldn't gather in large groups. So when we had to stop Borders Masses on a Sunday night, when we were lucky enough to get both the Commencement Mass and Ash Wednesday and even one House Mass, before the really big changes started happening. I've got to pay tribute here to one of our house mothers, Megan Brearley, who also works in our development communications team. Uh, Megan, in conjunction with our heads of boarding house, put together a really wonderful platform of Google Classroom, and that enabled each boarding house to be able to connect through different threads of conversation and photo sharing, as well as doing regular Google Meets 
uh, to make sure that boys were able to stay connected. So we had quite a built program to, to support boys at home and a number of families were, were really taken by the lift in spirits that boys had when they were able to connect online with their boarding house and their boarding staff. Boarding staff also put together wonderful things to engage boys with some content on that Google Classroom or Google site. We had trick shot challenges, we had playlists for, for songs. If you know Nudgee history, there's been different. We've obviously gone through world wars at Nudgee, which would have had an impact at the time. Many wouldn't know during the 50s, we had various polio um, outbreaks and a boy at Nudgee got that. And the whole, the whole of Nudgee was quarantined, I believe, for about six months and, and boarders stayed through the Christmas holidays at Nudgee. So this is a different version of that for the modern context. We had so much disappointment and loss of momentum of our pre-seasons. We had boys missing out on national championships and, and other extremely um, important events that they'd put so much time and effort into. But uh, Nudgy boys certainly didn't take that um, lying down. They jumped on board. They really got behind the program and supported the staff. And as a community, I think they came out um, well in front. Well, being in a school, especially in boarding school, all the news that comes from, like global news, is sort of foreign to us. You know, we're sort of a close-knit community, so we only hear the things that we hear. Um, and it was all speculation throughout the uh, first term, but not until um, probably the last week of term where Mr Fuller got addressed the cohort and it sort of became a realisation that maybe things are going to be different. From a football point of view we were heavily into pre-season preparing for a busy time of year uh, and as, as Sean says happened, happened pretty quick, reviewing procedures pretty quickly and then it wasn't long after that that uh, we were obviously shut down like everything else and, and looking at a change of circumstances. Well like the rest of society there was a lot of unknowns, we weren't sure when restrictions would start to be released and when life would start to get back to normal. So. Probably the first thing that you're concerned about is the well-being of your students and, and staff and the wider community, particularly our Year 12 students missing out on those significant opportunities that they will look forward to in their final year. So, you know, representing the school in that rugby jersey, whether they're in the first 15 or, or the seventh or 10th, 15, and then missing out on maybe being in the grandstand for a big home game. The big focus for us was sort of how we can provide for our year 12 boys. Nudgee's a big ship and I've always argued that it's a really big ship and that's a good thing but it's a hard ship to turn around and I'm surprised, delighted by how quickly uh, we adapted to what was in front of us and we changed direction and we were able to do that very very quickly, we were able to do it very very effectively so I think that was a, a big learning for me. We had to cancel open day but we also had to think differently about open day and we created a great environment to do open day online which was immensely successful and far exceeded our, our expectations so I, I, I figured that was a good thing. Before the World Health Organisation actually declared COVID-19 a global pandemic or even before all events over 500 were cancelled by the Australian Government we had already started planning for the online event um, so all the groundwork there was done. I wouldn't say it was difficult, I, say, I would say that it was exciting because it was a completely new format for our team um, to work on. So we were so used to doing um, a certain structure um, for our on-campus event that this was a great way to challenge us. But more importantly, we just had amazing people to work with. We've got great suppliers, a great filmmaker um, called Mr. Nick Piper, who is also a current parent, so he really understood the culture of Nudgee College. We never lost faith that we could make it happen, basically. So I like to interact with, with the kids, and, and that's a, a big part of how I teach. And so um, teaching to a screen was something that I was a little bit apprehensive about, I guess. As teachers, we're trained to pick up on the non-verbal cues of whether a kid's not traveling well. Um, in their work or if they've got some struggles either at school or at home. And so I was really concerned that if we go to an online platform, how I would be able to do that and then how I would be able to um, put something in place to help out that student. My biggest concern about um, online learning and teaching online was the amount of trust that I had to put in the students that they would engage with the content that I was creating, um, that they would show up to lesson. One of the biggest impacts was the actual timetable itself. A lot of schools made decisions about cutting the timetable, changing the timetable, uh, having some of their students 
learn in the morning, some learn in the afternoon. We made a decision not to do that. All we did was actually reduce the amount of time each lesson appeared, but the boys still maintained that same coherence of subjects, so still had the same contact with their teacher. So I guess there was some normality across, across the school in regards to learning and teaching. Away from learning and teaching, our hardest challenge was to look after the rest of the staff. So while a lot of schools and places were putting non-teachers off, we didn't. We actually found ways we could utilise the non-teaching staff and the support staff to keep the school running, but also from a Christian point of view, we wanted to keep them employed and make them feel like they were contributing, and we did that in some very effective ways. While other schools were humming and humming about fees, we, we dropped out straight away. Um, we dropped it by 10% and in fact we did consider even more because we're very conscious that there's pressure on the community. So I think the community could see again that we were very serious about supporting people in their time of need. When we uh, launched NC at Home or Nudge at Home, I used three words I talked about. Opportunity and challenge and adventure. And I think that we have embraced the opportunity, the challenges that were in there were certainly embraced. And, and it's a great story for us to, to reflect upon. The fact that boys were able to be taught every period of every day, they followed their timetables, enhanced their experience of learning at home and then it was built on the commitment and the hard work and dedication of, of, of teachers. So I think that's a, you know, something that we're immensely proud of and, and should take great satisfaction of. So we've created a YouTube channel across the various activities at the college and that's the way we've been uh, providing that content to our community. Skills videos, analysis type videos, and then something that I've been doing in the rugby department is connecting with some of our high profile old boys who have played uh, rugby or gone on to play rugby professionally and hearing their story and getting some insight into their world outside of school and their world in the rugby or rugby league type circles and some of their experiences and some insight into their training and what they've been doing in COVID as well. And that's been a good way to connect with the wider community and connect our old boys back to the college. Yeah, and I guess from the, the athletic development space, we've been uh, put out a few sort of targeted programs. So one of them was our community-based program where mum, dad, um, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles can all jump in on the same program based upon their level of uh, fitness. Um, and then they can get engaged through that working together because they're obviously going to be spending a lot of time with those individuals with close family. So, things that everyone can do, the whole Nudgy community, rather than just Nudgy boys. During the time when we were learning at home, we were looking for ways to keep uh, the students connected to their school community. So a lot of uh, what we can do is enhance what happens in, happens in the teaching and learning program. So we had several, several ventures like the virtual choir where we had a lot of our U12 leaders um, performing uh, from their home but joined together through the wonders of video editing. And, uh, and providing something that I had hoped would um, help to unify the school, but I even had this vision that if we had some kind of an online event where this choir would play at the end, that maybe even students sitting in their, in their home or in their office would sing along. And, um, and I think that's something that's gonna happen into the future. Really big surprise that I picked up from all of this was the students' willingness to actually reach out if they were struggling. I think the boys have really enjoyed being home. I know I've enjoyed um, seeing how happy they are with their brothers and sisters and with their family. So I've organised some social catch-ups uh, during the break, during break times and after school where the boys will log on to meetings, not just to talk about academic work or, or how they're going with class, but just to socialise and, and try and replicate that feel of nudgy, of being here in the office uh, like they are every day during break times and after school. So every week, uh, virtually every boarder had a phone call from his head of house uh, or from one of his staff. House mums connected with families to see how they were travelling. So we worked quite hard to make sure that boarding families and boarders especially still felt very much connected back here at school. The checkups, the wellbeing surveys that we have for example, are just great initiatives where the, the Nudgee College community really care about the students and how, they, how they're dealing with their problems. During this period for me and what I've learned is how important community is. Uh, working in boarding has just been in some ways really refreshing because we've had boys just absolutely screaming to come back and it shows how connected we are at Nudgee and I guess how important that boarding community is to those boys um, and to the staff as well. Do you learn responsibility for yourself as you live so far away from home? The favourite thing about boarding is, the, is all your mates around you and the brotherhood that you make and 
all the support that you get from staff and supervisors. There's nothing good about losing you know, time with your mates in your senior year, but definitely like as enjoyable as it could have been. And Nudgy did very well to manage it effectively and make sure no class time was really missed. We did not miss a beat in terms of the expectations we had of the boys, in terms of their studies. Our feedback from boys and parents has been that we've done this really well. It's been the synergy of a lot of our um, modernising in recent times had us really ready for this event. So certainly I think parents looking back would think that Nunji did this well and students looking back. I've been incredibly impressed. I think the communication from the school has been excellent. Yeah, we've obviously got a daughter at Hill Hallows as well and similarly that's been good but you hear stories from other, um, other parents about the lack of communication from schools and what's going on and how it's working. Um, I'm particularly um, impressed with the way the school's been working online. You know, I know a lot of schools are just setting stuff and you know, go away, do it, come back. And you know, there's been some active involvement, a lot of active involvement from the teachers. So I've been very impressed with that. We were always very impressed with everything they do for the boys, and um, I think they've really stepped up. and And it's been easy for us, and it's been easy for the boys as well. Making sure they've got enough food is the big thing as well. <laughs> They're eating a lot more because they're the here all the time. Shopping is gone. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've had to, to be very creative and think outside the box and probably put ourselves out, out of our own comfort zones a little bit. I think a lot of us have worked um, on our own demonstrations and, and pointing cameras at ourselves and stuff because obviously our options have been fairly limited and, and down to basically online content given, given the lack of face-to-face -face stuff. So I think between, between the department we've put out some, some great stuff, technical stuff, tactical stuff. Uh, Harry's done some great work in the strength and conditioning space. And, yeah, we've had to be creative and it's not perfect, but hopefully it's stuff that um, adds value to our programs long term. I was really surprised. Um, I felt the Google platform was really user friendly and our rollout with our trials made it really quite comforting to me to understand that I could, I could do this. The boys seem to be engaged and I can monitor their, their progress and tick, tick, tick so far. I got to go up to the beach and live up there and go surfing every day before school and after, it was, it was pretty awesome. And then the actual school was good as well. <laughs> the best part of online schooling was to not have to cut my hair. <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty big change. Uh, I found it quite difficult at the start just coping with doing everything online. Um, but I think over time, yeah, got into a good rhythm of it, but just found that sitting for six hours in a chair, just staring at a screen, becomes very repetitive and boring. So I found myself going outside a lot more and just trying to keep myself active. They're staring at a screen, they don't have the access to human resources at the school, the library, uh, music, art, they don't have any of that and they've, they've really rolled with it and also the um, the parents, uh, how grateful the parents are for what we're doing. It was very um, productive how Nudgy uh, was able to accommodate to our needs at home in such a short period of time. You get comfortable with how you teach and how you interact, um, how you do your job and sometimes like you'll always challenge students to take a responsible risk and try a new way of doing thing or a new way of learning and probably the, for the first time in a long time I had to do the same. I was worried about not actually getting the motivation of going to classes and actually doing my work. Morning Miss. Morning, how are you this morning? I'm so yeah. I'm very well, thank you. I've been missing the interactions with all my classmates and my teachers because yeah, I think it just makes school a lot easier when you've got your mates to talk to if you're like struggling with schoolwork or just anything and also like if you're having problems with the classwork you can just talk to the teacher after class. You can still do that on the sites but it's just not as easy. I personally took advantage of how great it is to be able to just look over someone's shoulder and point to a piece on their work and say actually it's a positive not a negative, this is why and just circle their work. Um, tell them really easy things just because I could see it in person or being able to look at a kid in a classroom and know they're disengaged or look at a kid and know that they're struggling whereas online I just could not get as good a read of that stuff so I think that's something I'm really grateful for and that I'm going to take forward. There was a really quick transition without that loss of our community that 
you feel so strongly in the day-to-day -day situation. I actually got a bit of one-on-one -on -one time without that rush between classes and the busyness that comes with actually being at school. Without that, it was actually quite nice to um, actually slow down and talk about it. I love coming to Nigeria. It's a place focused on people and relationships. Every day I get someone commenting, when are we coming back? Like I knew they wanted to be here, but some kids have surprised me just with how eager they are to return. The technology has been a fantastic success. It's worked really well with the Google programs and the Google Meets and I think our boys have really surprised us with how independent they can be and, and how well they've engaged uh, with the learning at home model. I'm really staying focused on my work. I get distracted quite easily. I've enjoyed working a lot more independently and by myself, getting a bit lonely. I think it's a reminder of what can be achieved in, in quite a short amount of time um, as, as long as teachers see reason and purpose for things, they are given support and they are given opportunities to prepare for that change. I think this has challenged, I suppose, society in general, but particularly here at Nudgee, that we are capable of, of, of getting outside of our comfort zone, uh, of, of learning new skills. Uh, and the fact that you know, we've got staff and students working so closely together, I think that's a, a certainly a recipe moving forward. It's a challenge for everyone, for teachers, families, students, and everyone basically throughout the world. And so I think it's, it's pretty amazing that we've been able to continue their learning, regardless that they're learning at home. What I think the community event returns and boys and we can gather in large numbers and, and affirm our sense of identity, affirm our sense of connectedness, I think we'll, we'll, that will be a, a benchmark for me. At this moment, when can I see that happening? I really don't know. Communities need to be able to see each other and express their unity. And in doing that, they, they communicate an identity to themselves and to the world. And it was really important for us to keep communicating that identity. Seeing the boys not only training, but being able to support each other on the sidelines, watching their mates run around in whatever sport they do, that's going to be the final tick that they get to see their mates play. I think when we get those first GPS games up and running for rugby, football, basketball, tennis, whatever it is, I think that that'll signal um, a massive step forward and a, and a return to some sort of normality after obviously an interesting year. Oh, it's wonderful, especially seeing all your boys, all your friends around, just big smiles everywhere and then seeing all the teachers, how excited they are to see all the boys back. It's just such a unique experience. It is great being back. <laughs> Human connection again is amazing. It's definitely indescribable. You know, although we've experienced a few hardships at the start of this year, I feel like it, if we come through the other side, it's a real testament to our character and I feel as though that, you know, all of us, including myself, can grow and learn from this for our future adult lives. It's been a wonderful experience being at home, but you don't realise how much you have until you put in an environment where those things aren't there. Um, simply just being back on campus from isolation has really put things into perspective in terms of what Nudgy College has. Not only the facilities, just the comforting culture at the school, yeah. We're incredibly proud of the way the school, the CLT and all the staff responded. The communications was first class. The care and compassion that they showed to both, um, you know, teachers and all the staff and all the boys and the community of parents couldn't be faulted. So as a board, we were very impressed with the school's response. I think something to take from this whole experience is that anything is really possible if everyone works together and supports and continues their learning, whether they're a teacher or a student, we can become not only better people, but better teachers and better students. All of these challenges that we face can be faced with a positive attitude and it all because something's different and all because something's hard doesn't mean it's bad and we've been able to find ways to kind of conquer those challenges. I think I will be more appreciative of the human interactions that we have when we can have them, particularly relationships with our colleagues and with the boys. You know, that's been the, the thing that I've missed the most is the capacity to hug someone when you see them coming back from a holiday or wish them the best for something and not even shake their hand. You know, I, I think the learning I'll take forward is that those things matter a lot. But I think also there's some 
period of time and for reflection to, to really say, well, okay, how has this changed us as a school? And that will play out over time. As a school, I think we're in a bit of a transition period here. We've come out of learning at home. We're back at school. It doesn't quite seem the same as where we were before. I don't think we're going we're back to where things were. None of us are in society either, to where we were pre-COVID-19 and for us, our case, learning at home. You can never know what's coming around the corner and I think this is just another a chapter in the 129 year history of Nudgee. Running through the street as fast as we can Where or when we find our way home We don't really care Since you've been gone, I've missed you Oh, is it wrong to say I care? You're the light that lights up from the ceiling You're the night hole that keeps on repeating Chase you anywhere, chase you anywhere You're the mystery, I can't understand you With good history, I know you know it too Chase you anywhere, chase you anywhere My heart, fragile like glass And then you smashed it Was it me? Oh, how can this be? I need to be free I've missed you Oh Is it wrong to say I can Oh You're the light that I saw from the ceiling You're the night on the keys on repeating Chase you anywhere, chase you anywhere I think that we are only limited as teachers by our imagination is what I've learned from this, that our capacity to teach is really quite limitless. In moving forward from this experience and, and the circumstance we've been in, I guess it's important to show that you know, whatever circumstances life deals us, we can be resilient, we can move forward, we can handle all the uh, complexities that life throws at us and ultimately we can achieve in all circumstances. There's an adventure that we were all on together uh, that's given us a great sense of, of satisfaction but more than just a feel-good story about hey didn't we do well and we did but I think beyond that we need to reflect as individuals, as staff members, as a collective faculty, as a community about what's the legacy, what do we take away from that, what did we learn from this experience, how have we improved. Chase you anywhere, chase you anywhere, yeah.